I've been a big fan of Cal Newport's for a long time. In addition to being a computer scientist at Georgetown University, he's also a best-selling author who has written some of my favorite books, including Deep Work, about our ability to focus and do work that matters, and So Good They Can't Ignore You, which is about developing your skills and creating a career doing meaningful work. He's been extolling the virtues of time blocking as a method for daily planning for over 15 years, and he was my primary influence for creating my daily time block plans. Now, one of the mistakes that I made early on was doing time blocking in isolation. And I discovered that you can't just schedule every hour of your day. You need to connect it back to your vision and your values. So I've developed my own system for this over the years, but it's not exactly obvious how to do this. And it's always been a topic of interest for me. So when I heard Cal bring up the topic of multi-scale planning on a recent Deep Life podcast episode, I was intrigued about the mechanics of how Cal did multi-scale planning himself. And as I dove deeper into this concept, I discovered that with a few tweaks to what I was already doing, I could create a pretty killer system for multi-scale planning in Obsidian pretty easily. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I do Cal Newport style multi-scale planning in Obsidian, and I'm gonna show you how you can set it up for yourself using a combination of templates and plugins. Now, just to be clear, this video is not affiliated in any way with Cal Newport himself. I'm just a huge fan who likes applying the concepts that Cal talks about. So let's start by considering what is multi-scale planning in the first place. In short, multi-scale planning is a way to make sure that your vision and your values get translated into your quarterly, weekly, and even daily plans. The major benefit of multi-scale planning is that it helps you stay grounded and focused on what's really important to you so you don't get pulled off track by things that really don't move the needle. This is not just breaking down big projects, however. Multi-scale planning actually begins above that by considering what Cal calls your roles and values. Now, in my version of this, I start with my life theme. It's a personal mission statement that encapsulates what my life is about and my personal core values, which are both individual notes in my Obsidian Vault that I review every 90 days when I do my personal retreat. But the important thing here is that you know what's important to you before you sit down to do any sort of planning. Now, once you get clear on that, you can start planning using different time scales. Cal recommends quarterly, weekly, and daily planning, which I think is a pretty good cadence. I personally don't do annual plans because I think that's too long and it's impossible to get that right. So I do planning on a quarterly basis and then reevaluate every 90 days. In my opinion, that's the sweet spot because a quarter is long enough to make some significant progress, but it's short enough that you have built in periods where you can reset and make the necessary adjustments. Now I first came across the idea of quarterly planning instead of yearly planning when I read the 12 week year by Brian Moran and Michael Lennington where they make the argument that when most people set annual goals, they then spend the first 11 months procrastinating and then try to push things through at the very end. So by shortening the planning period from 12 months to three months, you now have four opportunities instead of one to fix broken systems and make course corrections as needed. Now I have a whole framework I follow when I do my quarterly planning, which I outline in a separate YouTube video here. And if you wanna follow my process, the template is actually included in my free Obsidian University Starter Vault. You can download that for free by going to obsidianuniversity.com vault or clicking the link in the description below this video. Now the next element of multi-scale planning is the weekly plan. And this is where you look at your calendar for the week so you're aware of your meetings and appointments that you have coming up. Then you identify the important tasks that need to get done before the end of the week. And you slot those in around the things that are on your calendar. The advantage of considering what needs to get done at the week level instead of just on the day that it's due is that you have a little bit more margin to work with. If all you're doing is building your list the day something is due, you have no flexibility in completing it early or pushing it back a day if you just aren't feeling it. But when you consider things at the week level, you can see how you're making progress and then you can adjust your plans on the fly if need be without disrupting project deadlines for things that you need to accomplish by the end of the week. Basically, your plans become a little bit more fluid, which helps you maintain a better and more consistent work rhythm over time. Now, the final piece of this is the daily plan. And this is where time blocking comes in for me as I pick three to five things to work on and then time block my entire day around the meetings on my calendar and my morning and evening routines. It's important for this part that I, one, give every hour a job, which makes it easier to focus by determining my intentions ahead of time, and two, that I not try to do too much. That's why I limit myself to three to five things. And by regularly consulting the weekly plan, I'm able to see the regular progress that I'm making 
and resist the temptation to do too much in a single day. So that's multi-scale planning in a nutshell, and if you want to hear Cal talk about it more, he does so often on his podcast, The Deep Life. I discovered this podcast about a year ago, and it's quickly become one of my favorite podcasts. I put the link in the description below this video if you want to check it out for yourself. Now, when it comes to actually doing multi-scale planning, you don't need fancy tools in order to make it work. And in fact, on his podcast, Cal often talks about how you can do this with notebooks and plain text files. But I think Obsidian is the perfect tool for multi-scale planning. You just need a couple of plugins and templates to really make it work. Now, first, you're probably gonna to want to make sure that the Daily Notes core plugin is enabled. This is necessary if you want to do your daily time block plan in something like Day Planner, which I demoed in another video. But it's not strictly necessary if you don't want to do your daily plans in Obsidian. We'll come back to this later, but for now, you probably wanna make sure that this is toggled on. Next, you'll want to install the Periodic Notes Community Plugin. This allows you to create notes from templates for weekly, monthly, quarterly, or even annual notes. And as I mentioned earlier, when talking about multi-scale planning, I actually don't use the annual notes, and I don't use the monthly notes either. But I do like being able to use separate template files for weekly notes and for quarterly notes. Just like the Daily Notes Core Plugin, Periodic Notes offers options for note name format, the template file to use when creating the note, and the folder location for storing those created plans. I like to name my weekly notes so that it includes the year first by using year, 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 then a space, dash, space, and then because I want the week text in the file name, I use left bracket, week, right bracket, and then an uppercase W which gets formatted to the actual week number. Now for the template file, I use my weekly planning template file which is also included for you in the Obsidian University Starter Vault. I'll walk through the contents of that template in a little bit, but for now, just recognize that this is where you set the template you want to use, and then the last thing you do is to pick the folder that you want to store the created files in. I like to keep mine in a folder called planning. I'll set the same settings for the quarterly note, and in this case, I'll call the file name year, 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 which will translate to the year when created, then left bracket, Q, right bracket for the letter Q, and then Q, which gets turned into the quarter number. The template I use for this is my personal retreat template file, which I walked through in the how to do a personal retreat in Obsidian video that I mentioned earlier. So if you want a detailed breakdown of that whole process, go check out that video. I keep these notes in a folder called personal retreats. Now next, you're gonna to wanna to have the calendar community plugin installed. This allows you to quickly jump to both your daily notes and your weekly notes. You'll just need to make sure that you have the show week number option toggled on and then you can click on the week number to create a weekly note for the week using the settings of the Periodic Notes plugin. So how does this all tie together? Well, let me show you. As I mentioned before, the real heavy lifting is done during my personal retreat process. When I do my personal retreats, I like to get away for an entire day just to think. Lately, I've been going to a getaway house, which are these tiny cabins parked on campsites that are pretty affordable, pretty remote, and the perfect place to think about the next 90 days. I've actually got another video where I review my entire getaway house experience if you're interested. And if you wanna dive even deeper into the personal retreat process, I have a whole video course that I've created for that that you can purchase separately here if you want. And I do include access to this course for everyone who signs up for my Obsidian University cohort. But the template is in the Obsidian University Starter Vault if you want to give it a go by yourself first. The TLDR from the personal retreat process is that I review my life theme and my personal core values, identify my current happiness with the different areas of my life, spend some time thinking through what I should start, stop, and keep doing, and then set my intentions for the next 90 days. Those goals that I set during the personal retreat process are things that I want to keep in the back of my mind when I'm doing my weekly planning, as I want to make sure that I'm making consistent progress towards the completion of those goals. Now for my weekly plan, I use a template that has a couple of sections. First, I have a date token at the top, which adds the year and the week number. The code for this is date colon year, 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 space, dash, space, left bracket, week, right bracket, lowercase w, and all of that is inside of double curly brackets. Now next, I have an Obsidian task query that shows me everything that I have due in the next week. So for example, I have to publish an episode of both Bookworm and Focus this week as I record this. I'm planning on doing a whole separate video on how I'm doing task management in Obsidian in the future, but real briefly, I have tasks here for the things that have to be done 
And then I link to checklists that are also stored in Obsidian to make sure I don't miss anything. So when it's time to publish the Bookworm podcast, for example, I can click the link for the checklist and see all of the steps I need to follow. I just go down the list, check the items as I do them, and then reset the checklist when I'm done using the checklist reset command via the checklist reset plugin. Okay, so back to the weekly planning note, here's what that query looks like. First, I've got three backticks and the word tasks to show that this is an Obsidian tasks code block. Then a line with do after, and then a date token of date colon year, 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 dash month, month, dash day, day inside of double curly brackets. That gets translated into the date of the weekly note when it's created, which is the first day of the week. Now, if you do your planning on Sundays, but you have the setting toggle to start the week on Mondays in the calendar plugin settings, you'll also need to add a minus one D after the date to do some date math and adjust the beginning of the week due date for the task query. But if you do your planning on Sundays and you have Sunday set as the beginning of the week in the calendar settings, you can probably skip this. I have it added here because I use the Monday start date personally, so that's what's in the current template in the Obsidian University Starter Vault. But you can customize this to suit your own individual needs. Next, we wanna see all the tasks that are due before a certain date. So we'll add another line which has the code due before and then date plus 7D colon year, 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 dash month, month, dash day, day inside of double curly brackets. This will translate into the date of the upcoming Sunday when the weekly note is created. And the end result is that it will show just the tasks that fall between those two dates. Now, lastly, I like to use another line for short mode to keep the query looking clean. And if you're using the chronological Bible reading plan that I showed you in the last video, you may also need to add a line to remove those daily readings from showing up here by adding something like tags does not include hashtag Bible reading. So when I create my weekly note, I'm looking at this list of tasks that I need to get done this week alongside my calendar. So I'm aware of all my meetings and appointments. And then the next thing that I do is I manually create a short list of about five things that I really wanna get done this week. I have a section in my template for this called top priorities. And I add these things here, even if the task already exists in the query up above. This is where I basically build out my list for the week. Then below that, I have another section called painting success, where I write a single sentence about what success looks like this week. This is a simpler version of that list up above, though it frequently doesn't include everything on that list of priorities. This is basically a way to drill down to the essence of what a successful week really is and helps me understand the true hierarchy of the priority tasks up above it. So that's the weekly plan and I'll use that when I'm making my daily plans where I time block my entire day and I pick three to five things that I'm going to try and accomplish that day. Now you can use Obsidian to time block and I have a whole video on that as I mentioned earlier. But after experimenting with that a bit, I've actually gone back to doing this part analog. I'm currently using an Ugmunk heirloom journal with special paper that I buy and punch myself. And then I use a fountain pen to write up my plan for the day because I really like the feel. I do this at the latest every morning before I sit down to work, though I'm trying to get better at building this into my shutdown routine so I have it ready the night before. I time block every hour of my day from the time I get up to the time I go to bed, and I make sure that every hour has a job and that I'm not trying to bite off more than I can realistically chew. For what it's worth, Cal Newport also advocates for doing this part analog. Full analog planning like the bullet journal method has never really stuck for me because I like using the computer as the brain of my task management system but there's something to be said about creating the list for the day separately. In fact, I usually take the list that I identify in my notebook with that time block plan, and I transfer those three to five tasks at the top to a separate note card that I prop up on my desk in an Ugmunk analog holder so it's visible as I go throughout my workday. I like having that list visible and separate. It keeps me from going back to the task manager throughout the day, which helps me focus on the few tasks that I've identified as important. Now, once I'm done, I just throw the note card away, check off the tasks in Obsidian Tasks, mark off the things on my priority list manually with an emoji, and make a new daily time block plan for the next day. So that's how I implement Cal Newport style multi-scale planning in Obsidian. I've been doing it this way for the last couple of months and it's really working well for me. I find the cadence of quarterly, weekly, and daily planning is the perfect balance for me to make sure that my daily plans are in line with my quarterly intentions and the personal retreat process helps me make sure that I'm picking projects that are in alignment with my long-term vision and values. And all of this stuff also fits very nicely into the PKM stack model that I talked about in another video. 
And if you like that kind of thing, you might be interested in the practical PKM cohort that I've got starting soon. You can find out more at obsidianuniversity.com slash cohort. And if you're watching this video later and the cohort is closed, you'll be able to sign up to be notified when it opens up again. But all of the resources that I mentioned in this video, including all the template files that I use for my multi-scale planning in Obsidian, are available for free in my Obsidian University Starter Vault. You can download that by going to obsidianuniversity.com slash vault. I keep adding things to that Starter Vault, so if you've already downloaded it, you may want to go grab the newest version, as it now has reference files, code snippets, iOS shortcuts, example callouts, custom CSS snippets, and pre-configured plugins, in addition to the templates and tips that have been there from the very beginning. Now, once again, you can download the Obsidian University Starter Vault for free by going to obsidianuniversity.com vault. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.